Lindsay Hepner, is that right? Yes. Thank you Good so job. much for driving <laughs> all the way down here to Hennessy Studios and being in our studio today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Um, I, I just appreciate any time I get to speak truth and, and, mm -hmm. and talk some good sense in the industry. Yeah. <laughs> well, when the moment you came in, I loved your energy and I'm thinking that we're going to have an amazing episode here. But one thing that I could help notice was your, your nails. Oh, so you what is going on with that? Hurtful man. Huh. <laughs> I like it. I like um, it. Uh, do you like the color or did you like the story I told you beforehand? Well, both. <laughs> and I want to talk about this story, but I do like the color. I'm an eighties guy, right? So oh, I love the okay, neon okay. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I, it, they look great when it's just like this, yeah. you know, when they're just moving really fast. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yes, I cut them. Um, I, I told you before this uh, podcast that I cut them because they were too long okay. and now they're short and jagged <laughs> and <laughs> they need um, another another person working on them right now. So, yes. So what what so you you did those for <laughs> an event? Uh, co co uh, Coachella. Can Coachella. I say that? Yes. Are we not going to get sued here? No, because you were there, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. It's just, it's scary to say their name okay. out loud on a, yeah. Is it? Yes. Oh, ah, okay. Yes. Well, let's Back just refer story. to it as an event. <laughs> yes. Okay. The festival in The India. festival. Yes. yes. <laughs> so you were just there. Yes. How was it? Um, it was actually amazing because this is the first year. Well, actually, that's a lie. Um, the first year in a while that I actually just got to go for enjoyment. Um, okay. We've been for the... Besides, I, I kind of cancel out the pandemic as like the years of going. But sure. um, prior to that, like the last four to five years, we've been doing events. Okay. Like, um, so we've done high level events at Coachella and um, and those take three months to, you know, create. Wow. And usually we have like 50 plus influencers staying with us at a property and creating like Every single day, an activation, a, bur a dinner, um, a high-level event. Our last event was like 5,000 celebrities influencers. Wow. Yeah, um, at a double property with like an airplane hangar. We had a billboard, a private jet with our logo on it. We just went nuts. Huh. Um, so it was nice to just go as a, as just like... I bought a ticket. Yeah, and I'm going, huh. <laughs> and I don't have to uh, say yes to anyone. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. So how how so how long have you been doing events like at Coachella? Um, for for about four or five years. Okay, and then um, we've just been doing events in general. Yeah. Um, at one one niche that we work on. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've been we've been doing influencer marketing strategy for nine years now. So we're we're almost going to be hitting 10 years, which is, which is crazy to think because yeah. I started my business with $0. Really? Like I've never been funded. Um, I've done this all, um, on my, like on my own sure. money. And, um, it's been a very, very amazing ride. Um, and I've never felt so much risk taking in my life, yeah. um, which is also exciting for someone like me because I'm a big dreamer and, very very driven as a human so it's I, I I've never got to really sit down and really appreciate everything that I've really done yeah but um the accomplishments that I've done in the past nine years um I think I think have probably made my mom really happy so <laughs> so yeah. well let's talk about that for a second so <laughs> so upbringing mm -hmm. um so where were you raised um, I was raised in Huntington Beach, Surf City. So Kay. I grew up as a surfer girl. Cool. Got and, it. And um, actually my ex-boyfriend, who we've been friends for 17 plus years, who is a professional surfer, still doesn't believe I surf. But hmm. I, I, I think there's something funny to be said about that because my whole being of who I am is based on my dad teaching me how to surf, teaching me how to paint, um, kind of growing up as my own you know, black sheep and yeah. be going my own route and not going with what everyone else does. Mm -hmm. So it's been very ingrained with me to, you know, be kind of like the ocean, uh, you know, make my own waves, make my own um, uh, flow of things. Sure. And and I really loved growing up in Orange County. Um, it was a very beautiful place to to be a kid. And I didn't grow up watching TV. I wasn't even allowed to watch TV. Hmm. And so my dad has always taught me to like 
do things yourself and make your own money and um, just kind of be on your own wavelength. And, and, and that's how I grew up. And, and even now that I have my own business like this, that's how I've always strategized business is mm. I'm not going to listen to anyone else. Like, and that's not like something like I'm too good for people. No. It's more like I listen to my own gut mm -hmm. and I go the way I want to. And I think that's why we've been kind of an OG in the space is because we've always made noise on our own mm -hmm. and we've always gone a different direction than other people. So, and so yeah. you grew up as an only child? I grew up as an only child. Got yes. It. So I have very only child tendencies <laughs> yes i was kind of an only child too so my mom had me at 17 oh wow yeah young. yeah and then uh you know i lived with my grandparents didn't really have a father figure in my life right yeah. and so uh because of that i was very driven i didn't come from much right you know and so here i am now and yeah. like you everything is built on my own i have yeah. never received any kind of outside funding or yep. anything like that you just get that drive right and, um, and you're more appreciative of things oh, i think totally you know like you really sacrifice a lot to mm -hmm. be thankful for a lot yeah you sure are mm -hmm. so uh so as a kid like what were you like in in high school like were you arranging parties and <laughs> starting no. the influencer thing back then or what not at all no. i i I don't drink. Okay. I don't do anything. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are very surprised by that when mm -hmm. they meet me. They think like when, when they see my Instagram that like I look like I party all the time and yeah. I don't. I, I'm a very big homebody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm an artist on the side and that's a very lonely craft. You yeah. know, like I can't be around people when I'm creative. Um, and being creative just in general with other brands, I, it's, it's very, you know, I, I have to be in my own world, you sure. know, no outside, uh, social, mm -hmm. socialness. Um, but when I was in high school, you know, I was a dork growing up, um, and I think it, it was also just stemmed from my dad. Like, my dad didn't want me to have friends. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why that I'm saying that is because the fact that he wanted me to be his only friend. And mm -hmm. he didn't want me to have any friends because that was outside sources of creating a different world for me. Sure. And so when I grew up, I was, you know, kind of in my own world with my father. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got into high school... Um, I started getting noticed um, by the cool kids. Sure. And like that was, I mean, for any kid that's in high school, I mean, that's what you want, you know? Like I was being thrown around to each school for, by my mom. And so I didn't have like this gradual relationship with people because I was always going to a different school. Sure. So I had to meet new people all the time. And when I was in high school, I felt like a dork. Like I felt like I, I wasn't accepted and I was this outsider. And when I finally found my people there, they were the cool kids mm -hmm. and, and, and I felt accepted hmm. and that, you know, just to kind of stem to where I am now with my business, that is kind of our motto. And in, in my business is we bring brands to the cool kids table hmm. and it's translated from high school for me because like I was bullied. I uh, like, I had this one girl who literally would throw gum in my hair when I was on the bleachers. She would bully me at, at, at dances and se segregate everyone off the floor just to try to beat me up. Oh my God. Just stuff like that. And so my business now is like, if I see someone who really wants to sit at that table, I'm there f to make that happen, Sure, you know? And, and that to me is like something that I always wanted is someone to like reach out to me and be like, Hey, like this is not okay. Sure. You know? So yeah. I think that that's something <clears throat> that translates in, in now my business is like, I will grab when I first started the business, no one thought influencers were important. They're like, these aren't real models. The, these aren't real people. And I'm like, that's fine. I'll take them. Hmm. And I created my own world with them. And now that's everything people want sure. is those people. <clears throat> and so at that time in 2014, everyone looked at them like they're not capable of being anything. Mm. And that's a very... And, and I'm not saying that like lightly, like pe like modeling agencies, every single agency was treating them like that, you know, as yeah. like not normal people hmm. because they have a different leverage. Right. Sure. So I, I looked at all these things as like stepping stones of like, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to help these people. I, I know my purpose. Yeah. And sometimes a lot of people don't know their purpose. And, and, and I feel like, 
I had to be a light in a, in a very dark industry. I like so, that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so taking a step back, right? So high school, I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and so were you always entrepreneurial? It sounds like your dad was an entrepreneur. Yeah. Right? And I, so I've you got that from way. him. Yeah. And so, uh, what was your first business that you can recall? Uh, helping him paint. Helping dad Wh- paint. Yeah, okay. I used to help him paint um, patios for other houses, you know, for houses and stuff and uh-huh. building and everything. So it, it made sense that now, like, I just painted my first mural at a hotel wow. last week. And I was like, wow, this is like resorting back to my childhood. Like, yeah. I, I used to paint, you know, uh-huh. stuff like this. Like, so, um, uh, yeah, that was my first job. And I was making $60 an hour. Um, with my dad. So I was making really good money. (laughs) Um, so I'm used, I I was always eager to like do more things, Mm -hmm. you know, like when I was in high school, I had five jobs, but I, I loved being busy and creating new outlets of like being a personal trainer, working at a restaurant, like doing all these things. I had my own swim line in like by the time I was 18. So, um, I've always been very entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Um, so having vamped now was just like seamless for me. Like all my knowledge that I, I, my trials and errors of things just curated into this business. So that I want to, so that had to, let's bridge that gap. Right. So, um, entrepreneurial, you did this, you did that. Right. Um, like how did you kind of get into this business that you're in now? Like what was the genesis of that? Um, so I got into a really bad car accident, uh, in 2014, um, uh, on on Christmas uh, Christmas Eve oh or no. the day no 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 actually sorry the day after Christmas okay um so I had I had been living with my ex um like he he was like my childhood like I didn't see him the way he saw me like he like he's known me for my whole life and saw me as that girl that walks through the hallway like you know when time stops mm-hmm. like I was always that girl to him sure so we finally started dating. And it, it was total reverse. Like I was obsessed more with him than Mm -hmm. he was with me. And it, it turned into a detrimental ending of our, our relationship where I was depressed for a year and I was in the industry of creating uh, design. I was a designer and a creative director for some pretty major brands. Yeah. And I just felt lifeless. I felt like everything was just not good enough. And so this car accident actually was something that I kind of manifested. Okay. Um, it was the day after Christmas. I was driving home from the gym and it was like 6 a.m. And I saw this car coming into the intersection and I had a green light. He didn't. I was going like 65 mm-hmm. already. And there were so many moments where I could stop, but I just didn't want to. And, and you were already in a dark place. I was already in a really dark place. Okay. Like there was just like nothing left of me. I yep. was, I was v- it very much like, oh, this is perfect. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I can just end this right now. And so... Um, I went into it not breaking and just fully going full stream speed ahead and hitting him. Um, and I woke up in the hospital Hmm. and the doctor was so impressed that I didn't, I didn't have anything broken on me. I mean, my C4, C5 was messed up. I had all actually all other injuries. Like my nervous system was a mess, like for months and stuff. But because I didn't break, I didn't die. Mm. Um, and that's normal because y- you you hear all these stories about drunk people surviving really gnar- gnarly car accidents. It's yeah. because they're not they're not stressed and they're not holding the breakdown and being really like straight. Yeah. Because that's when you break everything and kill yourself. Sure. So I was loose and I was like closing my eyes and I was like, just take me. Oh my. And that's that's when I realized like my purpose. Um, I, I felt, you know, I, I, you know, I'm Christian. So Mm -hmm. I, I, I felt the power of God at that moment and I realized what I was here for. Mm. And so it wasn't my time. Mm. And, you know, I had no money to my name. I was starting a business plan in bed. I, you know, I was my, my, my boyfriend who took the place of my ex was coming over, icing me every day. Like my whole body was a mess. Sure. But I knew that when I got out of that bed that I was going to make something of myself. Mm. And that's what happened is like, I just didn't stop. I just was like, this is going to happen for me. I know it is. And I was not scared anymore. The word no wasn't fear. 
after having something that traumatic, you don't have fear, sure. you know, because like, what do you what do you have to lose? Nothing. It's an awakening. Yeah, it really is. And and it, it's very very powerful because mm-hmm. I remember the first year of having that power. I was like, man, no, I'm untouchable. Like, mm-hmm. you cannot say anything that will offend me. You mm. know, like nothing will break me right now. So, yeah. it was really, really a cool experience, and yeah. and I and I really appreciate that experience because I know a lot of people don't get that opportunity. Sure, you know, in their life, at ever to like understand the chance of having a second chance. Oh, you yeah. know, so yeah, yeah, no, that's a that's an a, an amazing story. And so that then led you into, um, I guess, what year was this? You said 2014? 2014, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it led you into, I guess, 2014 was when YouTube was really taking off, right? You know, like the Jake Pauls of the world. Oh, yes. All those boys, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think even before that was Vine, was it? Mm -hmm. Was that? Yeah. So were you like, were you kind of active on social media or kind of just more curious at the time or? Um, you know, at the time that I got into that accident, mm-hmm. Instagram was only photos. Remember, you took like a, f- a weird photo and that's you're like, saying. that's so cool. Yeah. It uh-huh. wasn't, there was no selfies. There was no video. There was nothing. There was no tags, nothing. <coughs> so it was very, very incubator stages, uh-huh. right? But yeah. I saw value there. I saw that you could create your own self off of this. And, and that was really important for me is like, how do I create a brand that in it, inspires who I am as a person, but also like inspires other people. So Mm -hmm. I was initially doing it for me. Like I was going on there going, okay, I'm going to do blogging, da, da, da. And, and even to the, to this day, I'm like, man, if I just stayed with blogging, like that could have also been a really big sector, you know, cause like that's when people started blogging and creating their own, you know, following a niche and stuff. But yeah. And was it just about your lifestyle? Like, what were you talking about? Um, no, it, it was just about, like, how to eat, how to, you know, do fitness. Because I was, like, really heavily into fitness. Okay. Like, that is my, like, and, and even now I'm really heavily still into fitness. But that was what I really cared about back then. Mm-hmm. And then also being a creative director. So what I did, because I was in the surf industry, is I reached out to all my clients that I was working with or had relationships with. And I was like, hey, can I take your articles of clothing? Can I go create a campaign with them okay so i'd go out to the desert and like do uh, create content with me Interesting. you know and build like campaigns with their product on instagram with okay. myself mm-hmm. and then i started realizing that i could be a creative director for these people for social media and then i started working with talent that were influencers that had really big followings and they wanted to be a part of these shoots mm-hmm. and then they started asking me to manage them And I'm like, wait, I'm on to something here. So then I reached out to other influencers that I saw had followings and was like, hey, do you know you could get paid? And they're like, we had no idea. This was when you didn't even get paid online. Interesting. And I found this outlet where I was like, I can get you paid to just post photos. Hmm. So then I started accumulating all the like, the people that are like big in the space now, I like I was reaching out to them when they were like they didn't even know they didn't that, have the influence. Yeah, they, they didn't, didn't have, have a manager. They didn't even know they <clears throat> can get paid online. They were just posting photos and getting a lot of likes. Like yeah. it was just kind of like MySpace, you know. Sure. So, mm-hmm. um, I just started accumulating these people, and then my next big idea was a year later, where I was like, okay, I don't know what company is going to trust me to do this, but. I want to take all these people on a trip mm-hmm. and create content around them and blow up brands. And everyone like literally said, no, thanks. We're good. Da, 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 da. One brand said, yes. They're like, I don't understand this concept, but I'm going to take it for a leap. Okay. We brought 15 talent to Hawaii. Okay. We did a whole tour mm-hmm. and experience through the whole week of highlighting their swimwear in every single thing we did huh it blew the internet up wow and that's how we became the agency internationally everyone found out about us through this one trip and now you see revolve doing it at every level like yeah. bahamas like remember like like if you look back on revolve around the world sorry revolve yeah i was there first <laughs> i did it first and it was something we trailblazed um other companies ha- actually had reached us out to us early on trying to figure out how we did it 
and all that stuff. But it was such a great exposure piece, you know, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's kudos to these, a lot of these brands that do it because when you have power in numbers, you know, when you have a lot of people in one situation creating content and having people see it and they're all, their followers are looking to see who's there and trying to figure out the brand and how you got there and all that stuff. Like that's high level engagement that Mm. clients want. And so we, we trailblazed that in 2000. Well, that idea was coming out of me in 2014 and we finally executed it in 2015 because it was such a big project. And now, you know, 25 plus trips later, I'm still doing it, but I can do it with my eyes closed because Right now, I know the essence of it. How, what makes a beautiful campaign like that? Sure. It's not only just getting random people together. It's like who fits well together to make it feel like it was effortless and to make talent feel like they're not working. So that so what is the name of your company? Vamped. Vamped. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. w- what's this origin story behind that? <laughs> so um, uh I, I used to model for Paul Frank and I became really, really good friends with the owners and the creative director and Jonathan, um, who is literally one of my muses and he is a creative genius. Um, he literally how you saw and perceived Paul Frank was his his mind. Kay. Right. Mm-hmm. And I came to him with this concept so long ago. Um, I was like, I want to do this business called Vamped and everything. And I showed him like what it looked like and vamped means like vamping up your business. So when people come to us, they want to relaunch and have a new look and a new feel and get out of the noise. So we vamp them up. Um, And uh, he helped me with the name to add an extra P like my last name. He's Mm. like, it just feels off with one P because it originally was V-A-M-P-E-D. And he's like, it doesn't feel centered. It Mm -hmm. doesn't feel centered. And he's... I mean, he works with fonts and creative, like he's a creative genius like that. So he's like, add another P he's like, and then no one can ever tell you it's not your business because it's like your last name. Yeah. Because my last name has two P's in it. Yeah. That's why I wanted to make sure I pronounced it correctly. Right. So, Uh so that, that also has translated into like, uh, you will always know the founder Mm -hmm. is me is so. Um, so yeah, that's kind so of, so that's how you came about yeah. that. And so, uh, you, you went on this first trip in 2015. It's mm-hmm. like, you're taking a big risk. You don't know if it's going to work. Right. Yeah. And it was, yeah. you said you blew up the internet. Yeah. Right. And so then you're like, I'm onto something here. Right. Mm-hmm. So then, so then what happens next? Oh man. Just everyone and their moms had a travel agency. Okay. Everyone. Uh-huh. I, I, it was every other agency had a travel agency and it was like, it was like, you know, it, it's obviously a compliment, but for me, like I, I'm the type of person that like, I like, I like to be in my own lane. And so like, I was like, oh my God, like it's so annoying. Yeah. Like <laughs> everyone thinks they can do this, you know? And, but at the end of the day, like I stay in my lane, I figure out new things I can do and, you know, make sure that I'm true to myself, you know? And anyone can duplicate what I can do, but I, it's they don't never have gonna the hustle. Be, they don't have the drive, the creativity. Yeah, yep, exactly. Exactly. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, you can go out and do that, but uh, like, it's not going to be me doing it though. So, so now is Vamped? Are you? Do you consider? Is it an influencer marketing agency? Is that what it is? S- yes. Okay. Uh, but I, I honestly, someone actually asked this yesterday. They're like, "Are you an agency or what are you?" And yeah. I'm like, "From the outside, we're an agency. Okay. From the inside, we're a brand. A brand. And the reason why I." I say we're a brand is because the way I marketed our agency was like um, the mindset of monster, you know, and, and, and to, if you guys really dive deep monster kind of took the approach of like how um, the Nazis marketed themselves, you mm-hmm. know, like always in your face, like your monsters in your face, like, mm-hmm. you know, monster first before, you know, who's represented by monster. Right. Sure. So we did the same thing. Like you're always going to know vamped and then figure out who we work with. It's okay. not going to be like, um, the other agencies where, you know, their artists or, you know, um, you know, the talent and then you never know the agency. Okay. So I wanted to do the reverse. I'm like, we're, we're going to just scream our name loud mm-hmm. and that's what you're going to know first. That that's. And so that's why I kind of say it's a brand okay. because agencies usually hide behind the scenes and kind of just, you know, follow suit of their, their, their influencers or their clients or whatever. I and see. I didn't want to be like that. Got it. I thought that we had more value than that. So, so yeah. who is your ideal 
client? Is it, you know, the person that has 700,000 followers that's going viral on TikTok right now because mm -hmm. of something like who yeah. is your target? Um, mm. Well, I mean, there's two, there's two, I guess, clients, okay. the brand side yep. and the talent side, because yep. We, we manage talent, but we also manage brand strategy creation, like mm -hmm. brand development and everything. And, and so my ideal client, I already got. got like it. I, l the fact that Harley Davidson put a hashtag with vamped on it really? was my ultimate. It's like so cool. that is like such a deep rooted brand that has lived and surpassed so many years yeah. of survival that I'm like, wow, I'm at a level where like Harley Davidson were working on their project. So let's you know? dissect that. So yeah. Harley Davidson. So like, what did you do for them? Like, you know, yeah. yeah. So we created an experience at one of our events and, um, activated content with some high level collaborators for the brand mm -hmm. and just made this experiential, um, like their, their new bikes that they were launching okay. and creating, um, jackets that were like kind of catered. It was actually at a Coachella event. Okay. Um, but it was, and so we had this hashtag with each other. Um, and it, it was just, and, and the, the daughter of the owner, the uh -huh. founder was there with us. And really? it was just, yeah, it was just a really cool moment. And the fact that they used our content, like our, our, our video we created for them for their, you know, launch piece. And yeah. it, it's just like, I, I don't get really too excited about too many things, but that I think was like, that that's when I was like, Oh, I, I think, I think I kind of made it, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, even though I've worked with some high level brands, I, that was just like, it spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Um, even though I don't have a Harley Davidson, I, I don't ride motorbikes. I'm actually like very cautious about people who do, Yeah. but it, it was just like, it was just a feeling of like that brand has uh, in marketing terms. I'm so, I look at them and go, wow, you guys really did it right. And mm -hmm. so I just, I appreciated that they like, you know, gave us a shot. And so I love, yeah. I love it because it sounds like you, you find the brand, right? You yeah. try to come up with something creative for them and then it's easy to not easy, but it's easier to get the influencers that want yeah. to participate yeah. in this campaign. Yeah. Right? Yep. Whereas I think some people kind of go and want to manage the influencers and then try to find the brands to connect it. Right. So totally. I think you did something so brilliant. Right? Yeah. You're doing it the opposite way. Yeah. yeah. And, and on the mm -hmm. talent side, I mean, I've worked with so many people and um, actually the, one of the most exciting ones recently was Paula Abdul. Mm -hmm. Um, she put me on her TikTok. We have a full blown TikTok video Is that right? on, on her TikTok. Yes. Okay. And she's been very, very great at, um, promoting herself lately. She's been very influential f throughout the years. I used to listen to her on tapes and try to know every single word and lyric. So mm -hmm. it was really cool to do a commercial with her and, she like I have a video of her. I asked her to jump on me and like so I could hold her because uh -huh. I was just so excited. Um, and I don't really get too fan fanned about anyone, yeah. but she, she's I mean an icon. Sure, you know even for my mom. My mom used to be a singer and dancer, so like that was a big deal for her to see me like do a commercial with her. Interesting, um, but. I think like a lot of people in the space, I, I look at people as humans, you know, I don't look at them as like, oh, I need to like bow down to you or whatever. I think, I think we're all just living through this life, you know, curating and, and being in our space and being artists. And uh, I give respect to anyone who has a craft. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think anyone's better than me and I don't think anyone's, you know, I, I don't think I'm better than anyone else. So yeah. Um, <coughs> it's equal playing fields, you know, and we're all on different journeys. So, yeah. So let's talk about this, even just the influencer space in general, right? It seems like that's the thing that everybody wants, right? Mm -hmm. They want influence, yeah. right? It mm -hmm. seems like you're walking around and people judge you based on the number of followers that yep. you have, right? Yep. Especially like if you're in high school, yep. right? Maybe not, you know, people my age. It's still some of that. No, right? I, I think every age, I think, is, is yeah, some right? kind of, yeah, It is. That's system, kind yeah. of like your social mm -hmm. calling card, mm -hmm. right? If you will. Um, and yeah. then there's like, there's real influence, right? Mm -hmm. You look at like a Justin Bieber, right? Yeah. Got talent, yeah. you know, got hundreds of millions of followers, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but then there's 
you know, Sally that goes to high school in Santa Clarita, right, that has 7,000 followers and is asking her dad to buy 100,000 followers so that she can be cooler, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, what's your thoughts about that? Is it, like, oversaturated? Are people trying to be influencers for all the wrong reasons? Um, I, I, I honestly am so thankful I didn't grow up in this space. <laughs> Me too. Like, I grew up surfing. I yeah. grew up playing basketball. I grew up like being outside mm -hmm. and not on my phone and not, um, watching TV or getting so hooked on a, a different reality, you know? Yeah. And so I think that the kids that are growing up right now, there's so much pressure to be perfect. There's so much pressure to be like this, like, you know, perfect person, not mm -hmm. only like online, but just like changing like when I hear like y little kids getting surgery or like having to live up to what they see online which is all fraud you know like yeah. I will admit like this uh, Instagram is a highlight reel yeah. it's not reality you know like we're not showing our bad selves we're mm. showing like our best parts you're controlling the narrative exactly yeah. everyone's controlling the narrative of what their reality is and so when you're a child and when you haven't fully developed and when you're not confident enough to like just be like whatever you know I'm at an age where I don't give a fuck you yeah. know mm -hmm. but there's kids who like everything's impressionable mm -hmm. I really really think that at the end of the day it's the parents like responsibility to tr take care of your child and tell them they're educate great every them. time and educate them that this is not real like there needs to be like some education there yeah. because I think also too, no matter how much you say to them, it's your actions as a parent. And I'm, I'm not a parent, but I know that your actions speak louder than words yeah. as a human being. Mm -hmm. And in the level that I am in business, I don't tell any one of my influencers how to be, except for I show them how to be. Mm. And I know I'm not their parent, but they respect me and they follow suit of who I am mm -hmm. because they're like, oh, she doesn't have to drink. Oh, she doesn't have to do surgery. Oh, mm -hmm. she doesn't have to be this. Oh, she can be her authentic self. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, I can be that way too. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to be that way. Mm -hmm. And and so I know that that also resonates when a small child is looking at their p parents. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing to make them feel secure and safe yeah. to be a better person for themselves? Yeah. Because there is so much pressure in school now. And like, I've been bullied, you know, but mm -hmm. my parents have always told me, do not follow them. Mm -hmm. Do not be the same person they are. Don't ever do things because you want to be cool. Do things because you instinctively want to do them. Sure. And so peer pressure has never been a problem for me. People have been asking me to drink my whole life. Mm -hmm. People have been asking me to do my dr drugs my whole life. Sure. And I've just kindly been like, I'm okay. T like I have, you know what I mean? Yeah, so testament to your upbringing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I can't thank enough my parents for leading that path because yeah. they didn't drink they didn't do drugs they you know what i mean they mm -hmm. pursued their dreams and so i really feel like the the kids now you have to show actions more than ever yeah. because these kids are falling in this trap of thinking that this is their reality and it's very scary well it's yeah. it's, it's you say that right but you've got like you said, you don't have kids. I do. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like our world, we didn't live in that world. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, we went to the mall, we had to call our parents. We had to go find a pay phone. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Like, we had to know? figure it yeah, out. Right? I had to print out a map. Exactly. Right. <laughs> on, uh, we had to whatever do that. that right? Map quest. Yeah. Oh my God. Just you know what I mean? But anyway, so like we have that knowledge to try to like, you know, educate our, our, mm -hmm. our kids. Right. And, and I think we have to do that because if we don't do that, now you've got educated kids that live in this whole social media world. Yeah. That's now having kids. Yeah. Right. And then like, what the heck happens to society at that point? Yeah. Right. It's kind of yeah. scary to think about that. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, kids listening need to know that it's perfectly fine. Like, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, you got kids that are like studying at, you know, got into Harvard and they're going to be a doctor. Right. But they're not as cool as the kid that, you know, went to Coachella and yeah, they got yeah, 10,000 yeah. followers because they post bikini photos of themselves. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Seriously, right? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I'm not saying one's better than the other, right? It's just, it's just different. It is. It's yeah. just different, right? Yeah. And they both are just socially accepted for who mm -hmm. they are, right? Yeah. Um, 
anyway, it'd be interesting to kind of see how this uh, how this goes. And then there's the other side of that, where it's like the business opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like you you make a living this yeah, way, right? Yeah. But there's also like you know my daughter doesn't watch TV. She's mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. She doesn't watch TV. Mm -hmm. She watches the Ninja Kids, right? It's like a show where they've got a hundred million followers on YouTube or whatever, right? And and it's like literally you think I would think that the parents like went to like film school the way in which they kind of create this show. Like yeah, seriously, yeah, it's yeah. like a it's like a reality show for kids and they just kind of show the ninja kids and they're doing gymnastics and this and that. But talk about sponsorships and millions and millions yeah. of dollars just from creating a home show, yeah. you know, on a limited budget. Right. So mm -hmm. like you think about that side as far as like leveraging social media for reach. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, for sure. And. And, and that's the thing. It's like, it, it's so funny because like, I'm just really honest about the industry. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I've been super grateful that the industry provided also a career for me. Sure. But there is always the other side of the coin. You know, like I, I, all, I too, as a human being have to mute certain things like I don't want to wake up every day with anxiety thinking like this person has to give like that's the one thing that's really scary about Instagram is, or just social media in general is like, you never know what you're waking up to, hmm. you know, like the dopamine hit, you know, like, are, am I going to be offended? Am I going to be upset? Am I going to be sad that I saw something like with an ex or, you know, is someone hurting me? Like, you know what I mean? It's just, I've had to learn to mute a lot of things yeah. and it has nothing to do with not wanting to like be excited for other people to thrive and, and be driven and everything. It's, my own mental health hmm. and a lot of people don't realize that you have the option every day to protect your mental health you do and mm -hmm. so for me i want to see quotes in the morning of me being great mm -hmm. of people who are helping me live and breathe a better me mm -hmm. and sometimes even with my circle of friends that might not be them, <laughs> you know, sure. what you're posting might not be it for me. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah. and like, I love you from afar, but I might have to mute you because <laughs> of the fact that you're not, you're not building a better me. So uh, I love um, that. Yeah. I'm going to mute people now. I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. It is a thing. It See? definitely is a thing. Um, and because you know, we're, we're human, we're human and like getting unfollowed hurts, you know? Yeah, um, it, does. It, it, it feels very much like a personal threat. Mm -hmm. So muting someone nicely yeah. um, where you don't know yeah. um, is just a lot better, you know, because it's not like I hate you. It's just that I don't I don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to see it tomorrow morning. <laughs> It's funny, like in, in my days, uh, in like when you wanted to like unfollow somebody, you yeah. just take a pen in your yearbook and you cross them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Basically, you're not signing my That's yearbook. That's how, or you, yeah, you give them devil ears, yeah. right? There you go. Take that. That, that right? was hurtful when you didn't get someone signed in your yearbook. Exactly. You're like, I only am giving this to my friends. It's a whole mm -hmm. different world, right? Mm -hmm. It is, you know, but we have yeah. to kind of stay in tune, especially like both of us, like in the agency digital space, right? Yeah. We have to, yeah. you know, like TikTok, I'm getting pressure. Like, uh, like, <laughs> you know, cause like we're doing this show, right? We, we yeah. produce a show and they're yeah. like, Hey Jason, get these videos and TikTok yourself. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so Jenna's going to record me here oh. after this and we're going to start doing some TikToks here. So, yeah. I yeah. actually, I actually got, um, it's, uh, Meltzer's team was asking me to David do David Meltzer? Yeah. Oh, he's the best. He's Is the that best. how we connected? Uh, yeah, I think awesome. so. And da mm -hmm. David's team was like, Lindsay, you have to get on TikTok, do three TikToks a day. I'm like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> you're out of your mind if you're thinking I'm doing that. Um, um, I'm like, I'll wait till uh, hell freezes over. <laughs> um, but I know that's like, uh, David's been amazing at it. And, mm -hmm. you know, but he also has a great team to help, you know, achieve those goals. Sure. But for me, I'm like, I, m my goal is not to be on TikTok. My goal is to uh, create and build brand awareness for other people. Yeah. Um, I, at some level, you know, I, I'm, I'm an influencer on, um, on Instagram and everything, but yep. To, to my own narrative, you sure. know what I mean? And to my own capabilities of having time to post. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have time to fucking <laughs> dance, dance it up on TikTok right now. So, uh, yes. yeah. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> if there's another one of me, maybe. <laughs> but right now, no. <laughs> so uh, so what does a day in the life look like for you? Like what? what oh, what, man. Yeah. Um, it's different every day. Um, we, you know... I, 
typical typical business uh, a lot of emails a lot of zoom oh man we take a lot of zoom calls and i'm very grateful for that we have a lot of referrals and a lot of leads to a lot of clients who want to work with us Mm -hmm. um and and i think that's also too because I don't take on any clients that I can't execute for. And, and I, I don't believe in the product or I don't believe that we could do a good job and, and add value. Um, I think in this industry, a lot of people have been burned by marketing teams Mm -hmm. and I try not to do that. I think it's really important to come into a situation where we're both excited and not one side's like, I already know you're going to do a a bad job. And I'm like, well, I'm not the person for you because Mm. if you already think that way, I'm never going to make you happy. Sure. And I just don't even want that that because when you are a referral based uh, based company mm-hmm. and testimonials are really important, usually people who have a negative approach about anything and always think things are going to go wrong are the ones that are usually bad mouthing you forever. Sure. So I just don't even I, no money or value could ever make me say yes to that. Mm. So I really enjoy working with people that give me leverage to be free. I'm a creative at heart. Like I'm not an agent. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people come to me thinking I'm an agent, a transactional person. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm a core creative. So I really care, live and breathe a brand. Mm -hmm. So when you come to me and you're excited and you're like, Lynn's like paint, how you want to paint, like create how you want to create. I thrive in that. Sure. When you have so much red tape on me, I will literally burst and I will be very, very not good at my job. Mm. So knowing that and understanding that's the kind of person I am. And I, and I tell people right away, I'm like, my genius is discernment. And I, it took me a really long time to realize that. I actually took a test because I was like, why is everyone over here in this agency world so good at fluffing things up and putting a fucking bow on everything? And I'm not. I'm like, yeah, your shit's your shit's shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it looks really bad. And they're like, whoa. Like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I had one client who like couldn't believe I was saying all that. And two of the third, like, so there was three partners. Yeah. The one of the partners were, was one of the people I was telling you, like always mad, always upset. Yeah. They're like, we'll never work with her. Mm-hmm. And the other two were like, I fucking love her. Like <laughs> she told us everything that was wrong with our business. We don't have to go anywhere. You yeah. Know? See? And like, they actually took that person out of their business to bring me on. Is that right? Yeah. Because they were like, we need someone who tells us the truth. We don't want to keep going down this path of being told this. We're great. We're great. Yeah. Spending all this money for no reason. She told us everything that was wrong with our business in fucking five minutes. <laughs> so, you know, I know some people don't like hearing it, but I'll mm-hmm. save you a lot of time, Got you know? It. And, and I'm, and I'm always going to be like that. I'm a very honest person and I don't know how to lie. Okay. Um, and so, um, yes. And, and so I took this test Kay. and it's this like genius test of like your, there's your, six your, your geni- zone of genius. Yeah. Kay. So there's like six zones of genius in yep. a company and you need all of them. Right. So mm-hmm. my genius is, um, invention and discernment. And I was like, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm like, that's why I'm always like, picking out everything that's wrong yep. because that's what I'm good at. Uh-huh. And a company needs that because people will just keep throwing shit at the wall going, is this great? Is this great? And I'll be like, none of that's fucking great. You know? <laughs> so, Got with, it. so that is where I thrive. And I finally learned what I was good at. And so building out my, my, my employees and everyone that works with me, I got I figured out their genius and like how we thrive together, but not get into each other's powerful lanes. Powerful when you get that data. Mm-hmm. It's so powerful. so powerful. Oh yeah. And so yeah. every time I get on a call with someone, it's either they, I learn their Zodiac, their gene. Like I literally send all my clients tests, like three tests, uh-huh. a personality test, like yeah. to know their, I'm a protagonist. So I try to figure out who they are. Yeah. And then now my new, um, my new, uh, onboarded staff they told me about numbers so yeah. i'm an eight they're like we hate eights i'm like why they're yeah. like because they're always so honest and uh, i was like well see but i have a four in me like they said it was a weird combination a four eight was a really weird combination interesting so I don't know my number yeah so mm-hmm. those little things like I, I even too, like, I, I know I started this. Uh, so on our website we had for a while is if you wanted to work for us, you had to tell us your Zodiac sign. And everyone was telling me like, oh, like you can get it. Like that could be something where you could get, um, you know, like insights into y- people, right? Yeah, yeah. But people were like worried for me. Cause they were like, well, that's kind of like 
you know, you can't do that. You can't for HR reasons. Yeah, and I was like, that's not possible. It is personality. It's a personality thing. Mm -hmm. You don't hire just anyone. You hire people based on their personality. Will they fit with the community? Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to do this. So I did that. And people actually found out that my agency was doing Zodiac signs huh. for, um, and so like there were certain things I was like, oh, I'd only hire a Virgo for that. <laughs> and like, yeah. I want to get back to your yeah. day, right? Because you went off on a great tangent. We got <laughs> so much, because it went from, <laughs> I wake up and I check emails and then <laughs> blah, 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 yeah. like here every my whole life, right? I love it, right? So much information. Well, yeah, <laughs> So sorry. what else? So, and I want to talk about Zodiac too, because I'm curious. Like mm-hmm. I, don't, I believe in it, but I don't know much about it. Yeah. And I want your thoughts about my Zodiac sign in a second. But okay. so you wake up, you check your emails, you get on Zoom calls. What yes. else do you do during oh, the day? Um, I put together like strategy mood boards creative um because we do a lot of like commercials and content Uh um we also do activations for for clients so reaching out to talent making sure they want to be a part of this brand you know uh, developing strategy uh so a lot of communication a a lot of like babysitting yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) like Uh at every level and how big is your team um we're i think like around seven right now okay um and uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, I, I actually saw a meme on Instagram the other day. It was like, uh, Jeff Bezos was saying you should only have enough people on your team that can feed one pizza. And I was like, that's, that's pretty, right. that's pretty interesting to uh-huh. me. And I was like, I'm doing something right, yeah. you know, because the, and, and what I took from that was if you have too many people, you're not putting value to the people that should be putting value. Like I wear a lot of hats all day, Sure. but I know that I am 10 people. Like I know that, you yeah. know, I, I can do a lot of things in one day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, I, I know my superpower is time management Got for it. sure. So, um, but, but I mean, d- a day in the life with me, I mean, I could be in Hawaii one, one week and, and doing a whole commercial. Like we just got back from Hawaii. So you travel a lot. I travel a lot. I'm mm-hmm. very thankful that the route I took was I want to travel. I want to create content. I want to be with fun people and I want to make money doing it. And I did all those things. And you so. love your life. See? Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So Zodiac signs. Yes. Um, so what's your Zodiac sign? I'm a Pisces. You're a Pisces. So my I'm father-in-law a Pisces, is a yeah. Pisces and he's very emotional, right? A hundred percent. We are, we are the most emotional. Um, like actually, every movie cries. Uh, like he yeah, is, yeah. That, he is not maybe you, yeah. but yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. I got, I got off birth control, so I don't cry as much, <laughs> okay. but um, yeah, I cry a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm a, I'm a Pisces Libra Aries. Okay. So that, that, says so much about me because Aries is where I get my drive. Yeah. Libra is where I can be really analytical and thought, th- thought out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my Pisces is my dreamer. So like anything I dream up, I just like execute. Cool. So, um, I was, uh, but m- how it goes is like your, your moon sign, your rising and your like actual, um, self or yep. what? Yeah, your mm-hmm. Pisces is more so like when I'm at home by myself, that's like who I am. Yep. So like my emotional side, not so many people see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's like your, is it your rising or your moon that pers- who perceives you? Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think your moon is in sign and it's going to give us what we think I am. Yeah, mm. so like what you think I am is, uh, is probably an Aries. Like okay. very driven, very, you know what I mean? I see. And then what I think you think I am is a Libra. Interesting. So I didn't know like there's I'm three different ways to look at it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So you, you need to know your, you, when you were born, where you were born. And um, I think that's it. And your birthday, obviously. And your birthday, yeah. Yeah, and your uh-huh. birthday time. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, so your time. So that will figure out exactly what you are. Yeah. Um, but I, it's just been so amazing to know that stuff because I really like to connect with people. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's fine. If you don't believe it, that's fine. I, like, it's not for everyone. But yeah. for me, it's really important to know people even if they don't know themselves, sure. you know? So I like to add value to my relationships of like, I want to get to know you better, even if you don't want to tell me what, what your your vulnerabilities are and, mm-hmm. and who you are. Like a lot of people I, I, I connect with really, really know that I like to hold space for people. Huh. And a lot of people don't like to do that, especially in this industry. We're very like transactional and very like, 
surfacey and have this mask on and like only show value to like our best assets never yeah. show like our vulnerabilities or like what we're scared of and sure and so i like to hold space for people and be like you can tell me whatever you want i will be not vulnerable yeah, yeah i will not judge you yeah so my so. my sign is aquarius oh so, yep yep mm-hmm. air and sign yep. and people think that's a water sign which uh, is yeah, really funny people do me. think so yeah yeah they uh-huh. always think it's a water sign it's yep. not and then my wife uh is a gemini so we're you like guys fit great. You're both air signs. Completely on the opposite spectrum. Like but you opposites both, attract, yeah. W- well, but uh-huh. also, too, though, you guys are very similar because you're both air. You both understand each other. Huh. Um, Not every night. <laughs> well, I mean, you're, you're, you're also human. You're also human. But how exactly. I look at it is, I look at when I try to explain to people, water <laughs> is obviously the depths, right? Yeah. Like, we're deep-rooted, like, emotional people. Yeah. You're a cancer over there. You're emotional. <laughs> Josh, um, yeah. And then there's earth signs, which is next. Mm-hmm. So we can, yeah, we can... We can communicate with Earth because they're the, they're the nearest to us, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then Earth can communicate with fire and water uh, very see. well, and then fire can communicate with air and Earth. Okay. And then Gemini can only communicate with fire, which is why a lot of people st- stay clear of Gemini's. So. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Scorpions. I hear the crazy. Scorpions ones. are the water sign that <laughs> they're are crazy. They're kind of nuts. Yeah, they're they really both, are. They're Every both scorpion the I ever met is yeah. like way out there oh yeah they're yeah. emotionally like attacky driven uh-huh. and and like i i can understand them because i am a water sign and like it doesn't affect me as much but yeah to be on the opposite spectrum uh-huh. they're the opposite spectrum of a gemini yeah like uh-huh. both are very like yeah so so is there a is there a book <laughs> is there a book that somebody can read if they want to know about this 100 yeah. percent. there's this book that i have it's amazing i actually my ex-boyfriend, who who's still my like I'm I'm friends with all my exes. I love them. Yeah. Um. My ex-boyfriend shared with this amazing book, and I forget what it's called. Like it's a long uh, title, but basically it's every date, birth date of the year, and you can read actually who you are and who you develop as. It's huh. really an interesting book. Really. Yeah, and okay. I love it. I go home every time I meet someone new, and I'm like. March 12th. <laughs> Who are you? Send Jenna the name of yes, it and we'll link I will. I'll take a the, photo of it. Yeah. Be great. I lo- it's just a fun, it's just an enjoyable book to have, you know, um, even if you don't believe in it. It's totally. I've, I've actually read people's signs out of there and they're like, holy crap, that's <laughs> me. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, I know. So I'm Aquarius sun, Libra ascendant. Oh. Wait, wait, say this again. I'm a what? I'm an Aquarius yeah. sun, mm-hmm. a Libra ascendant, mm-hmm. and a Virgo moon. And a Virgo moon. Oh, wow. So okay. double air and Interesting. Uh, earth sign. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but I'll I have know. to look at it. Well. It's very cool. So so you said your mom was an, uh, an influencer, dancer? Um. Well, my mom is an influencer now. Yes, she is. She's really? on YouTube. Um, huh. And the first time she told me she was on YouTube, I was like, great, mom. That's that's amazing. Huh. Um. What does that mean to me? Uh-huh. Um, because she would always ask me, how do you turn on the computer? Or how do you do this? And I was like, mom, go to Apple. Yeah. They'll t- take a course. Uh-huh. Now she's um, 250,000 follower subscribers what? and uh, gets 14 million hits. Are you serious? Yeah. And uh, well, give her the she, shout out here so people can she, tune in. She quit her job and she just makes money on YouTube. What's her name? Uh, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Okay. And so my mom used to be an actual music, like music artist. Okay. Um, she was on American Bandstand. She was like touring with the Rolling Stones. She was in Elvis's movies. She was what? dating the Carpenters, oh um, Beach Boys, everything. So like I grew up with a very like artistic mom so cool. and um and a surfer dad. So like. Yeah, my mom always needed to be in the limelight, which is a very Leo thing to do. My mom's I Leo. Don't, I so. don't know how I'd feel if my mom had more clout than I did. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, my God. Yeah, my mom, huh. at one point, she was a teacher, and then she she loved dancing. So we'd go and, like, country dance at night, and I was like, who is this person? Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be in, like, long skirts, and then she'd be in Daisy Dukes, you know? And I'd be like, oh, my God, I have two moms. What? So, uh, Yeah. Crazy, but crazy. That's cool. I'm gonna tune in and check it out. Yeah. So, um, but I grew up. I grew up with a very confident mom. Kay. So I pulled that. My dad was very like 
black sheep where he's like, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. Like, I'm going to do it myself. And then I grew up with my mom where she's like, everyone loves me. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> okay. So I, I grew up with very confident people in my life, you mm-hmm. know? And so I think that's like why I am the way I am. Like, I go by the beat of my own drum. Love it. Yeah. So. We're going to do something we call Hennessy Heart to Heart. Okay, great. It's where I just ask you a simple question and you just, whatever comes to mind, just answer. (laughs) Sounds good. Here we go. First question. Who knows you the best? Ooh. Probably my best friend, Jenna, of 25 years. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. And she's a cancer. See? We get along really well. Yeah. What's one thing that you're never caught without? Ooh. Um... Never caught without. Oh, sad to say, my phone. Your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> You'll know in a second. Like yeah. once you get in the car, right? Yeah. You know what I mean, you're like, wait a second, We're missing. Something, I know. It's right? like it's like trauma. It's it like really you just is. lost your kid. I you're like, where's every, my child? <laughs> I think that's everybody. Um, it's annoying. In fact, um, Adam Sandler wrote a song called "Phone Wallet Keys." Yeah. Have you heard it yet? No. Oh, you gotta listen to it. It's the best. Yeah. Because those are the three things that you <laughs> always have to have with you. Your well, phone, your wallet, your keys. Well, now you don't even need your great. wallet because, like, your phone has your wallet on it. See, you know you what really I mean? Don't, That's yeah. really frustrating. And, it, and then, yeah, he, he needed to make a new one, phone, wallet, <laughs> keys, mask. Because you're like, that's the dreaded oh, thing. Gosh. You leave, you're like, oh, my God, I oh. forgot my mask. I can't go into the store. What am I going to do, right? Well, not <laughs> anymore. Anyway, let's hope it stays that way. Mm-hmm. Do you collect anything? Um, It's a weird thing to say, but I collect people. And, and it's because like, if I find a really good person, I want them to know everyone I know that's good. Oh, okay. So yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. You're a connector? Yes, very like much. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So you don't drink, you don't do drugs. Um, what is your vice? What's your guilty pleasure? Um, I, I guess my guilty pleasure is being creative, you know, mm-hmm. like, I have so many outlets. I, I paint, you know, I design um, anything that's just like getting my hands dirty and creating something. That's my outlet. Yeah. Do you schedule time to be creative? Yes, 100%. I, I do have too. to. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. yeah. I, at night, I like, I, I, I thrive in that. Yeah. Um, I don't like to work late. I like to create late. So Wednesdays yeah. is my creative day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Like, I need it. I wrote an article, I think it was on Forbes or Entrepreneur, about taking an eight hour shower yeah. one day a week. Not Ooh. literally, yeah, but, but just just like because you know your ideas come in that like twenty minutes that you're in the shower, right? But yeah. why don't you just block a whole eight hour day to just, just to do that? Yeah, so that's what yeah. I did. So Wednesdays is my eight hour shower. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I love that. We'll link to that article <laughs> too. What's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, um, we actually had this discussion with one of my um, guy friend influencers who I was like, oh my god, um, uh, Vanilla Sky. Is one of my favorite movies. Tom Cruise, right? Yeah, Tom Cruise, Penelope. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like the thought of, you know, and, and I've experienced this myself is having like a second life, you know. Um, yeah. But like, he created his own reality um, again. But it was just an interesting narrative of like, oh, like so gut wrenching how it happened, car accident, everything, and then having to create this new persona of like, how do I rewind that back and like live a life that's a better life and. I resonate with that, hmm. you know, so. Mine's Karate Kid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. I don't know why. Anyway, um, What is one food that you would be really sad if you were suddenly allergic to it? Oh, I already, I already am. Peanuts. Peanuts? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm heavily allergic to it, yeah. So. Really? And, and, and not like the, the empty pen or whatever. It's like I have the four-day four allergy, so like I never knew I was allergic to peanuts, so uh. I was really destroying my body on purpose, like for no reason. So wow. I found out, and I was so bummed because I love – I had peanuts every day, huh. and it was just destroying my body. Yeah, wow. and I thought it was dairy. Everyone's like, it's probably dairy. So I got rid of dairy and ate more peanuts. Yeah. And like – then when I found out, I was like, oh, my God, I am not allergic to dairy. Wow. So I have so much dairy every day, and it doesn't do anything to me. So huh. I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> I, mine would be pasta. I eat a lot of pasta. It's not a good I, thing. I almost no. thought it was going to be avocados, which uh, would have been another that bummer. That could have been a bad yeah. one. Yeah. But penis was a big bummer. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything that you fear? Like, what's a big fear of yours? Um, I think I fear not being happy. You know, mm. I fear I fear that something easily can take my happiness away. 
you mm. know? Um, and, and that can be financially, that can be a friend or losing a parent or, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't have normal fears where I'm like, oh, I'm so afraid to like not get this, brand, you know what I mean? Yeah. This, this, whatever. I, I, I'm, I'm past that. Mm -hmm. I think my fear is just like the happiness of something. It's, it's being taken away from me. That's hmm. what I fear. Yeah. Interesting. Um, for me, I'd say my fear is getting older and becoming lonely. Mm. You know, when people, your kids go away, they yeah. start to do their own life. And God forbid one of us, me and my wife, pass. You know, it yeah, will happen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, right? Well, it will probably happen. For you sure. Know what I mean? But kind of being, like, lonely. You yeah. Know, I think that's, uh, that's mine. Are you fear? Are you fear? fearful of dying are you afraid no of not dying? at all i've, I've already gone i've, I've already I, honestly i'm on my third life right now um i had lyme disease so um oh. that was another thing that was very traumatizing um oh i am not f i'm not fearful of dying at all Me that was that is yeah that's and i'm not fearful of getting on stage either which is equally <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> equally for some people yeah um yeah no i i've lost a lot of fears from my car accident interesting so yeah mm. mm -hmm. what inspires you the most um my my friends yeah and people that are creative that i see um living out who they are um I, when i say my friends is because like I love seeing my friends thrive. Mm -hmm. I love seeing my friends be who they want to be. Mm. And that gives me energy to be better for them and be better for myself. Mm. Um, and then when I see people creatively, like in the art space, in the music space, whatever, like I get so, like, you know, mm -hmm. it, I get so inspired by other people's creativity. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah. What would your friends say is your superpower? Being a fucking boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote. We gotta make that like a teacher. Yeah. I love yeah. that. That's my, great. My friends are very proud of me. Um, and sometimes I, I'm really hard on myself. Like I don't ever like sit back and like, good job, Linz, you did that. You yeah. know, they're like, no, we see you. Like mm -hmm. you're you're doing good. So yeah. What's a cherished childhood memory that comes to mind? Um Playing chess with my dad. Hmm. Um, we used to play chess a lot to where we would actually build out big chess boards and like play them on the like big ones. Like really? my dad was a um, he, he built things. Yeah. So we'd build out chess pieces, paint it, create this whole thing. And so um, I, 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 I don't have a relationship with my dad for the last 18 years. When I turned 18, we stopped having a relationship. So um, hmm those memories you know i don't look at my dad I, I i'm so thankful for my father because he's he's literally made me the woman i am today mm. and and so creative um but i do remember that like that was i love the strategy part but it was also creative because we created our own like mm. pieces and then also it was something i did with him so yeah we yeah. should talk offline yeah <laughs> some stuff in common yeah okay. <laughs> yep um, let's see here. What zodiac sign do you get along best with? Um, for each different thing, I actually really enjoy Gemini's, okay. which most people don't. Um, but it's because <laughs> I like, my wife. because I love that they're two people and mm -hmm. I need to always be entertained. Yeah. So my ex-husband was a Gemini okay. and I love that he was two different people. Cause I, I got crazy Daniel and I got normal Daniel. So we and do have so, a lot in common. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I need to always, I, I'm the type of person that gets really bored really quickly. Yeah. Me so too. I need to be around people that stimulate me in different ways. And, mm -hmm. and I, and I really enjoy the stimulation of it. Um, and then I get along really well with other Pisces. Okay. Like I just know them so well. Like they don't even have to say anything. I know what you want from me. I know how you do things like yeah. everything. So I, I really uh, like my own sign around me. Okay. Yeah. If past lives are real, mm -hmm. what was yours? Oh, I, I completely believe that they're real. Um, I, and, and which, you know, a little food for thought of digestion, mm -hmm. um, deja vu. There's something weird about that where you feel like you've been there before, but you haven't. I feel like that's a, 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 a past life feeling. Yeah. Like, oh wait, you know, like you came back. So 
I, I don't think deja vu really happened. I think it was a past life feeling. Like, I don't know. It's so interesting that you say that because yeah. that is the next question. Oh, it says, okay. what do you think about deja vu? That's what I think about it. I think it's your past life of wow. being like, wow, I was there at this and moment Do you have before. any sense of what your past life was about? I mean, I must have done something amazing to be amazing in this life. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's how I feel. Like, how okay. did I get so many superpowers this year? I uh -huh. mean, this this lifetime. Yeah. I must have been doing something right the sure. last time <laughs> to not, you know, have one limb off, you know, yeah. you know, be a mess. Huh. And, you know. What's a lesson that you learned from a past relationship? Oh, don't date anyone that has great sex <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking psychopaths that's another <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean here. you are like just uh, like honestly to be honest let's be real uh. here you stay in a relationship because of the sex yeah <laughs> uh -huh. for all the trauma they put you through uh what real, this real talk <laughs> <laughs> it is real talk <laughs> that's a sound bite <laughs> yeah what does spirit uh, um like being spiritual mean to you um, I mean, my dad was very, very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And when I look at him and I think of that word, I think of just like accepting everything in your life for what it is and ha holding space and opening space for other things to come into your life, almost like manifestation, you know, like spirit spirituality is like just kind of being free in, in the things that are around you and, 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 and having like uh, like an ebb and flow with it, mm -hmm. you know, um, and 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 I think spirituality is like a really beautiful thing, you sure. know. Um, people who really connect in that way um, are really amazing people, you know. Like they and and they don't have any of this like forcefulness or judginess. Like they like take you for who you are. And and people who have that spirituality like kind of just have this like I don't know, just energy that like just. Yeah, I think that's kind of how I feel about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> what What do you do, like to heal? Like, what's therapeutic for you? Mm. Um, I I step away from the noise, so I need to recharge as a human being. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that. They're like, "Oh, you just keep going." Da -da. No, I like some people like get energy from people. Mm. I get energy away from people. Mm. So. When I need to heal, I need to be away from everyone. I yeah. need to be basically hibernating, sure. you know, and I can recharge that way and collect my thoughts. And and I'm really, really careful about my boundaries and people because I, I really feel like energy and frequency of people affect your body. Oh, and, sure. and, and I really believe that from how I got Lyme disease. Mm. I think there were too many people around me that were toxic and some type of disease like that affected me because I was vulnerable. Uh. And so I will never let that happen to myself again. Mm. I, I choose to not be certain places. I choose not to be around certain people because when you walk into a room and you feel this energy of like anxiety or whatever, because you know that one person there is you're gonna see him. Yeah, that's real. Oh yeah, like your gut instinct, your body telling you alert, alert, high alert. Yeah. I'm going to react. And everybody else can feel that energy exactly. too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I really think that our bodies are made at frequency level to connect us to certain people and to de so like. If you don't have boundaries on yourself, you can get ill just by being around certain people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I learned to hibernate. Hmm. <laughs> I do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> I seriously do. Like, I yeah. go to these conferences, and it's like all this stuff, dinners. Dad, yeah. Come, come, come. I'm like, I just need to go to my room. And yeah. Like, literally, like, plug my cell phone in and plug myself in for a little yeah. bit just to kind of get my battery life back up. The yep. pandemic was actually where I was thriving. Oh, yeah. Because I was by myself. Uh -huh. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. 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 So Lyme disease, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the question is like, is what is the hardest thing that you've ever had to overcome? Mm -hmm. Would you say it was that? hundred percent. That was. was worse than my car accident. Yeah. Um, because mm. I was scared I was going to have it forever. Mm. And a lot of people do. And, and my heart goes out to them because it's this one of the scariest diseases you could have because it's an invisible illness. No one knows what you're going through. My best friend, who I actually said that knows me the best, she had it at the same time as me, except she had it for four years longer and was about to commit suicide um, based on it because it tells you to kill yourself. Mm. Um, and I knew, I knew for a fact that I got it to save her. 
Mm. Like it was such a weird thing that like I got That's it right. Deep. I got it right when her family was calling me saying there's something wrong. Yeah. And I got it exactly at that time because I know I'm stronger than her. I know that I was going to figure it out for both of us. The fact that you think like that tells me so much about how you think. Yeah. yeah. I love that. We're both free of Lyme now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. That's Thank amazing. you. Yeah. What do you say to somebody that has Lyme disease? Isn't Selena Gomez, isn't she dealing with she that? She has lupus. Oh, she has lupus. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, Justin gotcha. Bieber has Lyme disease. Justin Bieber uh, has Avril Lavigne has Lyme disease. Hmm. Yeah. So what do you say to somebody that's going through that? Like, how do you, what, um, like how do you encourage somebody? What, what, what did you have to have? You know, to, it, to each its own. And mm -hmm. uh, my process for getting rid of it was very different than what I was told to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we're told to go and get antibiotics and get plugged in all day. And I was like, that's not me. Mm -hmm. I am not going to go down that route. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have another option for myself. Sure. And I knew that I could always go back to that option if I needed to, but I'm like, I'm seeing these people going this route and they're not getting better. So mm -hmm. this is the route I'm taking. I fully let this, this amazing human into my life help me become free of it. Mm -hmm. And I r truly believe it wasn't about the medicine. It wasn't about what I ate. It wasn't about all those things. It was about the mindset because he gave me freedom. Mm. He told me every day you were going to heal. You are going to get better. Yep. And if you tell yourself things, you believe them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I am not going to go with this doctor who tells me that I'm going to have Lyme, de Lyme disease forever because mm. I'm going to start believing that. Yeah. This man over here told me I would get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And we worked on that. Mm. I got rid of every single toxic person in my life. I feng shuied my house. I did exactly what he said. 11 months later, I cured myself. And it started with the doctor. And it started with him. Mm -hmm. I trusted him immediately because he was so powerful in giving me the right words. And when you feed yourself with good words, mm -hmm. you are going to react that way. Sure. You know? So, yeah. yeah. Very powerful. Yeah. Last question. What is the thing that you or the thing or experience or what are you most grateful for? Basically, I'm grateful for my health. Hmm. That is something we do not ever put first. Mm -hmm. I will never do anything again that destroys my health. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that I can do and like overachieve and all. But I've been there. Yeah, I, it's not worth it. If I can't be healthy, I can't do anything. You know, I've struggled. I struggled that 11 months in trauma and torture, hmm. trying to do my business and like basically have amnesia. You know, like my my brain was working backwards hmm. and I was r losing memory and I was suicidal, like in, in a creative space where my brain is what my clients need. I was sure. traumatizing, hmm. you know, so I think the most grateful thing I am is my health. Like, hands down. I love the people around me, and I'm so grateful for the support I have. But my health is what <laughs> makes me live and breathe every day. And you that's know. physical and mental health. Yes, yes. Right? Physical mm -hmm. and mental, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been amazing, Lindsay. Yeah, I yeah. really appreciate you being yeah. vulnerable with me, telling me all about your life, your business. Um, how does my audience learn more about you? Where do they follow you? Um, mm -hmm. j as long as you don't come over and judge. <laughs> 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 I'm a multifaceted person. Uh -huh. um, my Instagram is Linz, L-I-N-Z, Hepner, H-E-P-P-N-E-R on Instagram. My business is vamped, V-A-M-P-P-E-D.com. Mm -hmm. and online on social platforms and yeah i'm i'm painting i'm creating mm -hmm. uh for businesses and you know yeah doing the most <laughs> and it's interesting that you come on the day that they're literally outside painting a mural on our oh building. my god yeah Did you see that no but i yeah. saw that one over there it was they're beautiful doing it on this side yeah. actually right now oh wow talking, okay yeah i need to go, go check, check it out, out. Yeah. yeah i have so much respect for murals now uh -huh. for, um, the one i just did in palm springs in a hundred degree weather yeah. uh 28 hours uh -huh. I, i'm like yeah. Th this is like the option you have at jail. Like, do you want to fold <laughs> clothes or do you want to paint a wall for the rest of your life? I'm like, fuck, this is mural work. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>